Chinese Qigong has a long history. Soaring Quan Qigong has been well received by people both in China and from abroad. It has many merits. The movements are clear cut and easy to learn. It is easy to practice and qi comes quickly, cleaning out the meridians. Therefore, it has quick results in curing disease. And it develops man's potential abilities very fast. Mr. Zhao Jinxiang, Honorary Director of China Research Society for Qigong Science, created this Qigong exercise and began to promote it in 1980. At present, there are millions of people practicing soaring crane Qigong in China. Soaring Crane Qigong is a combination of physical movements and quiet meditation. It is an elementary exercise of the macrocosmic Qigong created by Mr. Zhao. In this part, we will be dealing with the basic skills of the elementary exercise, five routines of motion exercises. Now, let's talk about the essentials of each routine of the exercise. The first routine is called the integration of six directions. Why is it so called? The six directions refer to sky, earth, east, south, west, and north. According to the theory of yin, yang, and five elements, the sky pertains to yang, the earth to yin, and the east, south, west, and north to wood, fire, metal and water respectively whereas man who pertains to earth is in the middle now we'll begin from the preparatory posture of this routine firstly the feet should be placed apart a little wider than the width of the shoulders with the toes pointing slightly inwards the knees should be slightly bent. The arms should hang naturally by the sides. The body should maintain a relaxed, quiet standing posture. Why should the toes point slightly inwards and the feet be apart a little wider than the width of the shoulders? This is because only when the toes are pointed slightly inwards and the feet are placed apart a little wider than the width of the shoulders can the hips and costigial vertebrae relax. It is also easier to bend down and touch the ground. Secondly, the tip of the tongue should be placed against the upper palate. The facial expression should be like smiling. The eyes should look straight in front and the mind should be cleared of all thoughts. These requirements are not really as easy as they sound. It wouldn't matter if I were not so strict about them, would it? Yes, it will. For example, placing the tip of town against the upper palate is to set up a bridge which links the Ren channel in the front of the body with the Du channel on the back. Then the Qi in the two channels may circulate, which is called small cycle circulation. It must be noticed, however, that the tip of the tongue must not be pressed too firmly, and the root of the tongue should not be stiff. The smiling expression relaxes the abdominal as well as the facial muscles. Only when the eyes look straight ahead will the movements be smooth and steady. Clearing the mind of all thoughts again emphasizes relaxation of the body and quiescence of the mind. Thirdly, relax the body from the top downwards, including the head, neck, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, chest, upper back, lower back, abdomen, hips, knees, ankles, feet, and toes. The muscles, joints, tendons, and nerves in these parts must all be totally relaxed. 
Lastly, the qi should be made to sink into the lower dantian, and the mind should begin to concentrate on that part. Some people are not quite sure of the exact location of the lower dantian, and therefore do not know where the qi should go. The line drawn from Baihui Point to Huiying Point is the central channel where the lower dantian is located at midpoint between Qizhong and Huiying points. Use the mind to direct the qi in the lower dantian through the Huiying point and up along the Du channel until it reaches Dazui point. Then along the shoulders and arms until it reaches the Laogong points on both hands. Bringing up the wings, with the shoulders as the pivots, slowly raise the arms in front of the body. Then push out three times gently. When the arms are raised to the level of the shoulders, the palms should bend 90 degrees upwards. When the hands are pulled back, the mind should be focused on the shoulders. The angle between the forearm and horizontal level is about 45 degrees. When the hands are pushed out, the mind should be focused on the Lao Gong points. The angle between the hands and the arms should be 90 degrees. Spreading the wings. First, relax the wrists and spread out the arms to the left and right to make a straight line. At this time, the palms and the fingers make a 45 degree angle with a horizontal level. Then bend them upwards to form an angle of 90 degrees with the arms. When the hands move inwards, the mind is focused on the shoulders. The angle between the forearm and the horizontal level is about 45 degrees. When the hands push outwards, the mind is focused on the logong points. The angle between the hands and the arms is 90 degrees. Repeat this movement three times. Closing the wings. The arms relax and slowly move down by the sides until they form an angle of 20 degrees with the body. The palms are turned to the back and pushed backwards 45 degrees. At the same time, slowly lift the heels and make the body inclined slightly forwards.
folding the wings. When turning the wrist to fold the wings, the mind is focused on the fingers. Then the hands come out from under the armpits and are flung forward. Stamp the heels to the ground with some force. The fingers change from claws to the shape of bells and are shaken slightly outwards. Raising a ball of chi to the top of the head. Relax the fingers and extend hands towards the front. Hold the ball of chi and press it in through Bai Hui point. Expanding the chest by extending the arms. Relax the wrists and make the hands, arms and shoulders form a hexagon. making contact with heaven to collect young. Place the fingers together above the head and turn the palms upwards. With the cervical vertebrae as the pivot, first loosen the left shoulder, bring the left elbow forward down and back to its starting position, keeping the right hand above the top of the head. Then loosen the right shoulder and repeat the motion on the right side while keeping the left hand above the top of the head. The chain should be pulled in and the cervical vertebrae gradually stretched and loosened, with Bai Hui pointing upwards. The thoracic vertebrae should be stretched upwards. The thoracic vertebrae should be led by the shoulders to stretch upwards. The lumbar vertebrae should be extended upwards and downwards. The shoulder should lead the vertebrae upwards while the buttocks pull downwards and the vertebral joints are gradually stretched and loosened. Making contact with the earth to collect in. Using the waist at the axis, bend down with the arms beside the head and touch the ground in front. The mind is focused on the logon points. Then relax the waist and touch the ground in front of the left foot with the mind on the logon points and the yung chuan point on the left foot. Relax the waist again and touch the ground in front of the right foot with the mind focused on the logon points and the yung chuan point on the right foot. Turning the hands to shape a ball.
move the body weight to the right foot. The heel of the left foot turns inward, while the right hand moves around to the front of the left hand. Then turn the left palm up, and the right hand moves up to hold a ball with a diameter of about 30 centimeters. Meanwhile, the body is straightened. Drawing in Qi from the left. The left foot slightly moves inwards in a curve, stepping out 45 degrees to the left to form a stance. The right hand moves in a curve downwards to the right groin with the palm turned inwards 45 degrees. Meanwhile, the left hand moves upwards in a curve to the left side in front. The eyes are focused on the laogong point on the left hand. After a moment, turn the head forward. The left hand moves inwards towards Bai Hui point, beaming Qi in through the point, and the hand descends next to the left ear and along the left anterior side of the body, guiding the qi inside down to the lower dantian. Drawing in qi from the right. The directions are the same as for that from the left. Ending form. Move the body weight to the right foot. Turn the left hand facing downwards to level with the right. Then push out both hands about 45 degrees to the left and the right respectively. At the same time, project the coccyx. The buttocks should be slightly open as if sitting on a high stool. When projecting the coccyx, Bijun point should be in line with Qi Zhong point. Then relax the shoulders to collect the qi in the upper half of the body and direct it to the lower dantian. Then use the mind to contract the huiyin point to collect the qi in the lower half of the body and direct it to lower dantian. When the hands move in towards the lower abdomen, use the mind to introduce the qi into the lower dantian. When the hands are about two centimeters from the lower abdomen, move them along the hips and sides and let them fall down while straightening the legs. This is the end of the first routine, integration of six directions. Now let's have a look at an uninterrupted demonstration of this routine.
The second routine, penetrating heaven and the earth. The preparatory posture for the second routine is basically the same as for the first routine. The only difference is that the feet are parallel and the distance between them is equal to the width of the shoulders. Lifting the wings. With the shoulders at the pivots, the arms are slowly raised in front of the body until they are level with the shoulders. When doing this, focus the mind on the logon points. Spreading the wings. Turn the palms downwards. Extend the index and middle fingers. Catch the ring finger and the little finger with the thumb to form short fingers. Then move the arms to make a straight line. from fingertips to fingertips. First, move the left arm until the forearm makes an angle of about 45 degrees with the horizontal level. Then, move the right arm until the forearm makes an angle of about 45 degrees with the horizontal level. Repeat this three times. Then, make the arms form a straight line again. Change the sword fingers into the crane crown fingers by placing the tip of the middle finger just at the base of the nail of the index finger. Looking at the sky, First, the body bends slightly forwards. Then the upper body bends backwards. The heels are lifted off the ground and the whole body forms the shape of a bow. While looking at the sky, the mind visualizes a big ball being held in arms. Closing the wings, the body gradually resumes the posture before bending backwards, but the heels remain lifted. Then the arms slowly drop down until they make an angle of about 20 degrees with the body. During closing the wings, the mind is focused on the logon points. Folding the wings, turn the palms to face backwards. Then the clawed hands are lifted directly along the sides of the body and thrown out in a curve from under the armpit. retrieval of chi. Stretch out the arms in front of the body. As if holding a bar of chi, lift it slowly in front of the body. Then beam the chi in through tianmu point and guide the chi inside through central channel downwards with the hands. The hands should be level. When the hands reach the level of the shoulders, the elbow should also be level with the shoulders and the chi should be guided into the lower dantian.
bringing qi into the chest. The body turns 45 degrees to the left and the left foot steps out 45 degrees towards the left front. Spread out the arms with the palms facing backwards. The chest is thrown out and the belly is pulled in. Meanwhile, the mind is focused on the Lao Gong points. Then turn the palm forward and close the fingers to form two cupped hands. The left hand gathers qi and presses it in through the qi hu point on the right side. Whereas the right hand gathers qi and presses it in through the qi hu point on the left side. Consequently, the forearms are crossed in front of the chest. Penetrating the heaven and the earth. Lower the left hand and then turn the palm upward as if to support the right elbow. The left hand is about 10 centimeters beneath. Then separate your two arms in opposite direction with the left hand moving up along the right forearm until it is 15 centimeters above Bai Hui point. At the same time, move the right hand to below the coccyx so that the two arms form a Tai Chi line. The mind should focus on the Lao Gong points. Bringing qi into the chest. With the tip of the foot as the axis, the right foot turns inwards until the heel faces the heel of the left foot. Then the left foot turns outwards with the tip of the foot as the axis. The body turns about 180 degrees after the arms form a straight line with the palms facing forward, the upper half of the body first turns about 90 degrees to the left, during which time the right hand gathers qi and presses it into the left side of the chest. Then the body turns about 90 degrees to the right. The left hand gathers qi and presses it into the right chest. Finally, the forearms remain crossed in front of the chest for a moment. Penetrating the heaven and the earth. The movements of penetrating heaven and earth were also done a moment ago. The movements this time are the same as those before, except that the direction is opposite.
ending form. Shift the body weight onto the left foot. Retract the right foot in a curve. Meanwhile, project the coccyx. Bijun point should be in line with qizhong point. Simultaneously, flatten out the cupped palms and bring the two hands toward lower dantian, as if holding a ball of qi. Relax the shoulders, contract the huiyin point, and move the hands in towards lower abdomen. When they are about two centimeters from lower abdomen, move them across the hips and along the sides and drop to the sides. Meanwhile, straighten the legs. That is all for the second routine, penetrating the heaven and the earth. Now, let's have a look at this routine from the beginning to the end. The third routine, the crane's head and dredging the channels, has the function of making yang ascend and yin descend. Preparation. Stand with the feet slightly narrower than the width of the shoulders, the distance between the feet being about 20 centimeters. 
direct the qi in the Dantian to Huiying point and up along the Du channel, passing through Da Zui, Yamen, Baihui, Yintang, Renzhong points, and finally reaching Chen Jian point. Stretching the neck. With the cervical vertebrae at the axis, the chin is thrust out 45 degrees downwards like the beak of a crane. Then it is put back in a curve and the legs are bent slightly with Baihui point upwards. When bending the legs, do not let the knees exceed the tip of the feet vertically. The above movements are repeated three times. When the chin is thrust out, the mind is focused on Chenjiang point. When it is pulled back, the mind is focused on Dazui point. Each time pulling back the chin, keep the Baihui point straight upwards. Swaying the head. When the head sways to the left, the mind is focused on the left turning point and the coccyx. When it sways to the right, the mind is focused on the right turning point and the coccyx. With the swaying, the body rises with an even speed. At the instant of making contact with heaven, the mind is focused on Baihui point. Dual Retrieval of Qi The movements of dual retrieval of Qi have been performed in the second routine, so they will not be described in detail here. Parting the hands to regulate Qi the hands move to the left and right along Dai channel to behind the body, where the outer logon points are pressed firmly against the two Shen Shu points. Relaxing the lower back and rotating the hips. Relax the lumbar joints and use the left hip as a starting point first to make three circles clockwise and then three counterclockwise. Rotating the knees.
Before the hands are withdrawn, the thumbs should be pressed firmly against the laogong points. When the knees are being bent, the palms should be placed on the upper margin of the kneecaps. And during the circular movements of the knees, the soles should not leave the ground. Therefore, it is mainly the hip, knee and ankle joints that are exercised. Notice that the circles should be as round as possible. When the knees move from the front to the back and from the back to the front, a complete circle is formed, each knee making half a circle. Dredging the channels. The palms rotate inwards with the laogong points at the axis and the thumbs are placed against shihai point. Squat down and stand up three times. Dredging the channels mainly means to make qi pass through the knee and the ankle joints, the yungquan points, and the channels in the lower extremities. When squatting down, focus the mind on the knees. When standing up, move the focus of the mind towards the yungquan points. Dual Retrieval of Qi The movements for dual retrieval of Qi have been performed twice in this routine. This time the movements are exactly the same as before. Ending form. When the hands are on the level of the navel, the fingers are relaxed and slightly bent. Push 45 degrees outwards to the left and right respectively. Then turn the palms and move them inwards as if holding a ball of chi. When the hands are about two centimeters from the lower abdomen, they move to the hips and drop down naturally by the sides. At the same time, the legs are straightened. We have completed the third routine of the crane's head and dredging the channels. Now, let's repeat this routine.
The fourth routine, the crane touching the water. The preparatory form for this routine is exactly the same as that for the second routine. The feet should be parallel and the distance from the outside of one foot to that of the other being equal to the width of the shoulders. Retrieval of Qi. Lifting the wings and touching the water, slowly raise the hands in front of the body. Lift the left leg at the same time until the thigh is 45 degrees with the horizontal level. The shank is perpendicular and the left foot is about 10 centimeters from the ground. When the body is lower to touch the water, the waist leads the whole body to move downward slowly. The posture of the left leg remains unchanged while the tip of the foot touches the ground slightly. The upper body is kept erect and the hands drop down to a level no lower than the navel. The waist again leads the body upwards. At the same time, led by the shoulders, the arms are gradually raised to a level no higher than the eyebrows. Such movements are repeated three times. When lifting the wings and touching the water, focus the mind on the Logum points and the Yongqian point on the left foot.
making a crane step and bringing qi from fingertips to fingertips. Draw the arms back a little and then stretch them out again with the palms facing the posterior lateral direction on the left and right sides respectively. At the same time, lift the left leg slowly. Step out, making a curve, and place the heel 15 centimeters in front of the big toe of the right foot. Then, shift the weight of the body to the left foot. Lift the right leg so that the tip of the foot is about 5 centimeters behind the heel of the left foot and approximately 10 centimeters from the ground. When lifting the right foot, focus the mind on the sword fingers of both hands and the yung chuan point on the right foot. Then, do the movements of bringing qi from fingertips to fingertips and crane crown fingers. Spreading the wings and then touching the water, change the crane crown fingers into in palms and do the movements to touch the water three times. When the movements of touching the water are performed, the upper body should be kept in an erect posture and the mind should be focused on the logum points and the yung chuan point on the right foot. When the body moves downwards, the posture of the right leg should remain unchanged and the tip of the toe touches the ground slightly. The movements of the hands are between the levels of the eyebrows and the navel. and touching the water. The movements here are exactly the same as those done before, except that they start from the opposite side. Please watch carefully. Exercising the arms and walking like a crane. Spreading the wings and touching the water. After touching the water, the left foot makes a small step to the left while the shoulders relax. The arms stretch out horizontally and gradually drop down slowly until a 20 degree angle is formed on each side of the body.
dual retrieval of chi. Ending form. The ending form of this routine is exactly the same as that of the third routine. We have just explained the fourth routine, the crane touching the water. Now let's have another look at this routine. The fifth routine, mingling with the source of all chi. The main purpose of this routine is to provide overall exercise of the whole body, so as to exercise and loosen all the joints, regulate and balance the chi and blood throughout the body, develop consistency between the upper and lower parts, the exterior and interior, 
the surface and inside, and mingle with the source of all qi. Preparation. Preparation for this routine is the same as that for the fourth routine. Dual retrieval of qi. Balancing yin and yang. Without moving the feet, turn the upper body about 90 degrees to the left, while the head turns about 180 degrees to the left. At this time, the mind is focused on Lao Kung point of the left hand and Ming Man point. Then, without moving the feet, the upper body turns 180 degrees to the right. The mind is focused on the Lokung point of the right hand and Ming Meng point. The movements are repeated three times. Rotating foot to dredge in and yang channels. Place the hands akimo on the waist and lift the left leg. At this time, the mind should be focused on the yung chuan point of the left foot. Raise the thigh until it is 45 degrees with the horizontal level and keep the shank perpendicular to the ground surface. When kicking, focus the mind on the back of the foot which is stretched out to make a straight line with a shank. Then point the tip of the foot upwards and kick out about 45 degrees to the lower front. At this time, the mind is focused on the heel. After kicking, draw circles with the ankle joint at the axis. The leg is kept in a fixed position. At this time, the mind is focused on the ankle. With the foot suspended, First draw three circles outwards and then three circles inwards. Try your best to make the circles round. Afterwards, 
The left leg resumes the posture before kicking, and the left foot is lower to the ground. When lowering the foot, focus the mind on the Yongquan point of the left foot. After the foot is placed on the ground, the distance between the feet should be equal to the width of the shoulders. Then lift and kick out the right foot. Point the tip of the foot upwards. Move the shank back a little and kick out about 45 degrees to the lower front. With the right ankle joint at the axis, draw circles with the tip of the right foot. First, three circles outwards, then three circles inwards. Afterwards, let the right leg resume the original posture and lower the right foot. Such movements should be repeated three times for each leg. With the source of all chi. The arms are gradually raised towards the left side until the right hand is level with the shoulder and the left hand is slightly lower. The palms incline 45 degrees towards the front. With the waist as the axis, turn counterclockwise three times, then clockwise three times. Notice that both arms should be straight when pointing upwards and downwards, and the wrists and elbows should not be bent. Afterwards, the hands fall naturally to the sides of the body. Dual Retrieval of Qi Ending form. The movements of the ending form are the same as those for the third and fourth routines.
We have finished explaining the fifth routine, mingling with the source of all qi. Now, let's have another look at the movements of this routine. friends in front of the screen 
Now that all the five routines of the exercise have been explained, let's follow Mr. Zhao Jingxiang and practice the whole exercise together.
Thank you.
These five routines of motion exercises involve the basic skills in the elementary exercises of the macrocosmic qigong that will strengthen the tendons, bones, and muscles physically and temper the spirit, qi, and mind mentally. They limber up every joint in the body, dredge every point and channel, strengthen the internal organs, bones, and muscles, replenish healthy qi, enhance vitality, promote the circulation of qi and blood, and improve the body functions. As long as one persists in doing the exercises, it will make one stronger and healthier. If one has a frail constitution, it will aid in the prevention and treatment of diseases. If one is aged, it will help prolong life and restore youthful vigor.